Okay guys, so welcome back. Let me just refresh your memory on where we left off. So if we take a look here, we see that we have completed our first two tasks over here. And right now the next thing that we need to do is to check if email already exists in our database. Now how to do that? Well, first of all, we need database. So let's handle that first. Okay, so this is a MongoDB um, site, so we're going to use it for this series. Um, so you need to download it and install it if you didn't already. So um, just navigate here. If you're on the Windows, it's really easy. If you're on Linux, it should be still easy. You can um, you can find some pretty good tutorials on that. Like if you're on Ubuntu or Debian-based machine, um, the Digital Ocean have like a lot of good tutorials on how to install it so just pause this video do that and come back once you're done um, now let's assume that you you've done that so now we need to start the mongodb um, on the windows um, you do that by navigating to uh, your first of all your c drive by the way if you open this commander if you're new to it and you're currently on your secondary hard drive and you want to navigate back to c you just type c like this and now you're in on the C drive. So now we need to navigate to our program files. You can use tab to autocomplete the name for you. Then there is a MongoDB uh, folder over here. There is a server folder that we need to access and then there is a version number and then we can access the folder called bin and inside of that folder you have MongoD executable. So just type MongoD like this. MongoD like this. And now it is working if you see this waiting for connections on port and then this number. So now it is active and so we can move on. So we need to check whether the email already exists. So for that we're going to use MongoDB with Mongoose. So first of all we need to install the Mongoose. So let me kill this server once again and let me type, type yarn add Mongoose like this. Once it's done, I navigate to the app.js file and we need to connect to it here first of all. So let's create a mongoose uh, variable that will hold reference to it. So we need to require mongoose. And then what we need to do is to actually connect to our database in particular. So um, with, with uh, something like Postgres or SQL based databases you first of all need to go on and create a database yourself but when you use Mongoose um, it will automatically create it for you in case the database doesn't already exist. So we can just type here uh, mongoose.connect and then we need to provide um, a string to that um, database so the protocol is mongodb and then we specify local host and then the database name over here so I'm going to call this um, code worker authentication like this and now what I'll suggest you do is download another software that will help you when using MongoDB it is called uh, RoboMongo this is its site so you can just download it once you downloaded it and started it, um, you'll get screen like this, but you won't have anything over here, so let me remove that. So you will go create, and then you would specify, like all the default settings will work, you can just change like the name if you want, so I'll call this localhost, and then I click save, and then, then we can connect to it. So right now we don't have any uh, databases on it, so so let's move on and then later we will um, take a look at RoboMongo when the time comes. So now with this out of the way, let's navigate back to our user's route over here. And what we need to do is we need to create a user model, uh, first of all. So let's create another um, folder here called models. Make sure the model folders is in the root, like it isn't like subfolder or something else. And there we want to create a new file called um, user.js, like this. Now over here we want to basically describe the, the, the user to the mongoose, which will in turn um, handle the model inside of the MongoDB for us. So to get started, 
we need to get again reference to the mongoose in this file as well so we can type const mongoose equals require um, mongoose like in the app.js file then we need to get a handle on the schema so we can type const schema equals mongoose.schema actually don't need to do this but it's much easier to just type schema than needing to type all of this and then let's actually create that schema so we'll call it user schema and we'll, it, we'll store it inside of a variable so const user schema equals new and then that schema that we just defined and we need to pass object in here describing the actual user so the user as you can tell from the, the website page will have an um, email will have username and will have passwords now you need to uh, specify like uh, in the key value order like the name of the pro of the field and then the type of the field so email is going to be of a type string username is going to be also of a type string and password is going to be of a type string now what they also like to do is for every model to have like timestamps like when something has been created and when something has been updated now this is totally unnecessary for this project but let me just do it maybe you'll want it want it as well so you need to put comma and then specify another object over here and that object will contain a property called timestamps which is going to be yet another object and i promise this is like the last object inside of here so what we need to specify is the field names so we are going to have created ads like this and updated ads and let's call it updated ads like that now that's done and the last thing that we need to do is to make use of this file in the other files but before we can do that we actually need to build objects using this schema over here so we are going to type mongoose.model then give it the name of the user and then um, point to that user schema that it should take so user schema like this now we need to export this so other files can access that so let me um, first of all save this into some sort of variable and then let me ex uh, export that variable so uh, module.export equals user like this now this is done and we can access it from any other file that we want so we're going to access that from the users.js in our routes folder so when everything worked over here uh, we want to check if the email is already taken so right here we are checking if email is already taken and how can we do that well we can uh, first of all require that that model that we just defined so we can type const user equals require then we need to s navigate to that file so we need to go up one directory and then go inside the models folder and then there is a user um, file over there so now finally we can use that model and then there is a function on it that is called find one and then we can specify some criteria uh, based on how we want searching to, to proceed so we want to search by a field called email and we want to check whether that field has a value of the currently specified e email of our user so the currently specified email of our user is stored in both request.body but if you remember also in the result.value um, let me try to find it for you actually let me start this once again and let me just fill this really quickly um, As you can see, we want to access email from here. So result dot value dot email. Okay, so we want to check this email against um, result dot value dot email like this. Now, um, before we proceed on, I want to use a sync await function for 
for this function uh, because I don't want to deal with promises over here so really quickly let's just turn this fetter function into a sync await function so I need to type a sync over here and then I just need to wrap everything inside of a try catch so let me just write try here go all the way down um, catch error and then call next with that error like this and I can then indent all of this and let's proceed so now with using this uh, sync await I can use a nice um, sync looking um, code so I can just await this function and store the results of that into a new variable so let's save the content of that into a variable called user Okay. so now we need to check whether that user actually exists so whether this function was able to find um, such user containing this email or not so we can say um, if user already exists then we want to notify user that he she can't register a new account with that email because that email is already in use so we'll do something similar like we did here so we are going to, requ uh, to use request.flash specify error and then message should be email is already in use like this then again we need to redirect to the register so he she can try it again and return so that the next code down below doesn't get executed so now if we try that um, this will always pass because like we have zero users but just tr trust me that this um, that this is working so far. So um, with that said, with that said, um, this is our current um, state of um, sign up flow. So we've done first three um, things. The next thing would be to um, hash password if the email doesn't exist, and then the save user to the database and then redirect to the login page so I'm going to end this video right now because it is again getting uh, a bit longer than I would like it to be so in the next video we are going to tackle the next problems and I hope you enjoyed this one and that I'll see you in the next video